Jean, are you headed home? My buddy Svetlana tapped restlessly on the table's surface with her polished fingernails. No, I'll be tardy. My spouse has to pick me up. Jean lied shamelessly. Very well, as you desire. See you tomorrow. Swaying her hips, Svetlana departed from the office. The staff exited the office one by one. Hurried footsteps and clattering heels echoed outside the door. Jana grabbed her mobile phone and pondered for a moment. He's probably already taken a beer to his soul, lying upside down in front of the TV. She sighed and pressed the call button. After three long beeps, Zana heard the muttering of the working TV, and only then Victor's voice came through. I'm listening. Vidya, it's raining outside, and I'm wearing suede boots. Pick me up. Shanachka, I'm sorry, I didn't know you'd call. I had a beer. Take a cab, said the husband. As usual, I didn't anticipate anything different from you. Incidentally, when you proposed to me, you pledged to carry me in your embrace. Tanakka, beloved soccer, the phone rang with the shouts of fans, and Jana let go of the call. Gone were the times when her husband waited for her at the office. He didn't have a car then, but he still picked her up every day. Jeannie sighed, switched off her computer, got dressed, and departed from the office. The silence of the hallway was startled by the click of her heels. Everyone had already left long ago. In the entrance hall on the ground floor, at the security desk, stood Deputy Director Dmitry Maximovich, conversing on the phone. Tall, fit, in a lengthy black coat, he resembled a Hollywood movie actor, not an ordinary office worker. Women gossiped that he was unmarried. Jean always possessed a cutting wit, and she presumed he was unwell, given that such a handsome man was still single. He's seeing a model. I blank out her name. She's frequently on the covers of magazines, expressed her buddy Sveka, who knew all the societal gossip Victor in his younger years was no inferior. He used to do 30 pull-ups on the bar every day in the yard. And then, then he got lethargic, started consuming beer, grew a belly. And every day, coming from work, Jenna witnessed the same scene. Victor lying on the couch in front of the TV, and on the floor was a can of beer dot. She already went to the door, as behind her back there was a delightful baritone, which gave her goosebumps. Jana Igorevna, you're late. I thought my husband would pick me up, but he couldn't, she said with a smile. Turning around, Dmitry Maximovich put his cell phone in his coat pocket and walked up to her. I'll give you a ride. He pushed open the door, allowing her to step forward. No, there's no need. I'll call a cab she declined, stepping outside. Prior to the entrance stairs, she halted, gazed at the pools on the pavement, at her stylish suede boots. Indeed, it was spring, the snow had thawed before the showers arrived. Take into account that the taxi has already been summoned. Dmitry Maximovich took Shanna beneath his elbow and guided her to his vehicle. How could she decline? It was a shame that none of the female staff had spotted him, they would have been jealous. There were numerous women pursuing the attractive man. Dmitry Maximovich deactivated the alarm and unlocked the door of the sub in front of Jana. She effortlessly hopped onto the quite high seat, playfully oinked, and awkwardly adjusted the hem of her skirt on the knees of her slender legs. Dmitry Maximovich gently shut the door, circled around the car, and settled down next to her in the driver's seat. I've been observing you for an extended period. You're requesting in moderation. You don't overreact, but you don't give anyone a difficult time either. I believe you could lead the marketing division. What about Klavdia Petrovna? Jana was taken aback, not anticipating such a proposition. It's time for her to retire. She is a good, dependable worker, but it is challenging for her to keep up with the new programs. Zana squirmed in the seat. She felt sorry for Claudia. She had once taught her the tricks of the trade, but she should not refuse the enticing offer. Her grandson is about to get married, and she wanted to work more, to save for an apartment for him, Jana said with a touch of sadness. You should not worry about that, dear Jana Igorevna. If that's all it is, she'll get enough severance pay. So do you agree?
Jean sensed Mitri Maximovich's stare examining her side view. In an instant, she gazed ahead, lost in thought. As she turned her head, he was already peering through the car's windshield. Suddenly, Jean became aware that a vehicle was nearing her residence. Turn right, that's my place, she interrupted the prolonged silence. Stop in front of that driveway. The car came to a halt, but Jean hesitated to step out. She struggled to find the appropriate words to express her gratitude. Perhaps we could have lunch together sometime, uttered the enchanting phrase in the deputy director's velvety baritone. Her heart raced at the enticing new proposal. Maybe, she responded, wearing a playful smile, and gracefully exited onto the moist ground in front of her driveway. See you tomorrow, Dmitry Maximovich beamed brightly. His voice and smile left Shanna feeling lightheaded. As the sofa departed, bouncing over the potholes that filled our yards. The subsequent day, in front of all the workers, they gathered for lunch collectively in a restaurant. After that, the lunches were succeeded by dinners, and then, and then, not surprisingly, what occurred afterward? What youthful lady could withstand an attractive man? If there was one, it indicated her spouse wasn't so hopelessly reduced to a sofa cushion. Jean did not fly fluttered, experiencing desirability, in love and younger by ten years, and life no longer appeared so dreary and boring. Only every day the sight of Victor on the sofa provoked more and more annoyance and refusal. Today, he was lying on the couch in front of the tea. On the floor, there was an unfinished bottle of beer. Jean wanted to approach and kick it, to throw her accumulated irritation together with the beer on the carpet. But she would have to clean it up. She sighed and started to change, disregarding her husband's gaze. You've changed. You've become so. Victor ceased speaking, choosing the word. Wow, he ultimately observed. Jean pondered maliciously. What type of lady? Regular, she responded casually. You appeared like that when we encountered you. Did you fall in love? What if I did? You don't pay attention to me. Teeth and beer are more crucial to you. Why? I was paying attention. You changed your hair, Victor said cautiously. I've been doing it for three years. Jean sighed once again. We haven't gone to the movies in a thousand years. We could have dinner at a restaurant for a change. I am also tired at work, but I come home and do not lie on the couch and become to the stove. In the voice of Jana heard capricious notes. Jana, you cook more delicious than any restaurant chef, complimented her husband. What fly bit you? And Jean gazed at Victor pondering that neither his tone, nor his awkward flattery, and even more so his presence, had long ago evoked nothing but tedium and exasperation in her. Perhaps I should genuinely depart from him. Yet, where to venture? And he possesses nowhere to proceed. You haven't been the same lately, Svetlana remarked when the office was empty. Your eyes are ablaze, you're radiant. Are you in love? Rumor has it you're romantically involved with Dmitry Maximovic. You truly are something. Did you submit your resignation to your spouse? I wish I had, Jana shrugged. You merely echoed his words. Happy, with a husband and a lover. Verka is 15 years your junior, and he's infatuated with you. Jean remained silent, yet her heart was uneasily throbbing with envy. Verka is not only younger, but also without a spouse and offspring and beautiful. You have to give her credit. Men adore her. Harkin, Svet, bestow upon me the whereabouts of the lady who practices enchantments, she inquired in a hushed tone. And whom do you desire to answer so? Would it perchance be Dmitry Maximovich, or do you seek to eliminate your competitor? I wish to bewitch my spouse. Will you grant it to me or not? Jana glanced at the door to ensure no one could overhear. No regrets, Svetlana skimmed through the address book on her mobile phone. Here's the location. Is it truly so dire? Worse than ever, Jana sighed. Is Victor being unfaithful to you? Svetlana was horrified. It would be preferable if he were. Then what is lacking? Dmitry Maximovich is a transient occurrence. He never proposed marriage to you, I presume, Svetlana whispered. 
He had no involvement in it. Well, thank you. I must attend to work. Jana gazed at the monitor screen. She refused to postpone it, and that night, she proceeded to the location. A plump lady in a relatively costly and stylish outfit welcomed her. She observed her visitor with a sharp gaze, causing Jean to shudder involuntarily. Have you made up your mind to eliminate your spouse? No, not that extreme. Just, and she disclosed almost everything. Here's the bottle. Add one drop in your husband's tea every day. Remember, not more than one drop. If you escalate the dosage to hasten the effects, your husband's heart may fail. Even better, use it on your lover, the witch suggested. Jean paid what she was instructed and hurried out of the dim abode, which smelled of herbs and incense. In her residence, she positioned the flask inside the wall kitchen cabinet. Her spouse and offspring were not accustomed to entering that place. They solely frequented the kitchen for meals, so they wouldn't locate it. However, Jeannie nudged the vial behind the tea package. She hadn't yet decided when she would commence administering the remedy to her husband, or if she even would. It was regrettable that she hadn't inquired if it could be mixed with beer. Then her spouse would undoubtedly consume it. Jeannie proceeded to the chamber. Victor, as usual, was reclining on the couch, engrossed in the television. A partially filled beer bottle stood on the floor. Zana positioned herself in front of him, blocking the view of the TV. What are you doing? Victor stared at her with astonishment. You're lying around here. Why don't you assist me in preparing dinner? At the very least, you'd be helpful, she said irritably. I don't know how to cook, Janachka. Victor sat up groaning and rested his feet on the floor. So learn, what will you eat when you're alone? Jana inquired and proceeded to the kitchen. What do you indicate solitary and you and Nastya? Her spouse hurried after her. I'm departing from you. Zana ceased and turned around so suddenly that Victor ran at her with his belly Zana wrinkled her nose dot and then she erupted into tears. Maybe it was the impact of the remedy which was already in the closet and waiting for its time. Or perhaps the resentments, claims, and disappointments amassed in her soul for 20 years of married life. Only Jean suddenly poured out everything that had boiled over on Victor. She chatted and chatted, and could not stop, not giving her husband the slightest chance to interject Dot when she was fatigued. Victor asked bewildered lie, and meh? And you persist to lie on the couch? Jana replied tiredly, and Nastya, she is big. Let her decide for herself with whom she lives. Notwithstanding, Jean genuinely planned to depart from her spouse in the nearby future. However, the bottle in the wardrobe didn't allow rest, compelling her towards desperate audacity. She expected that the injured male ego would prompt Victor to take action, provoke him to take offense, and shut the door. Consequently, she wouldn't need to carry the guilt on her conscience. That's it. I've had enough, Zana declared and exited the kitchen. Victor hurriedly followed her. No, you wait. Jana, I love you. I can't do it without you. His words were interrupted by a groan. Jean glanced back. Her husband was slipping down the wall to the floor, clutching his heart. Don't pretend. Get up. It won't help. She said remorsefully and intended to leave for another room, but Victor's head suddenly dropped onto his chest. Jean rushed to him, squatted down, started to rub his shoulder and feel his pulse. Victor showed no signs of life. Nastya, my father is not well, she shouted, attempting to revive Victor. The 15-year-old daughter emerged from the chamber, observed her father on the floor, hurried over. In the kitchen, inside the cupboard, there is a phial with drops. Mix it with the water, Jean expressed in a quick tone. Nastya fetched a glass. Jenna unlocked her spouse's mouth and started pouring the remedy into it. Her hands were trembling. Nearly all of it spilled past her mouth, trickled down her neck, onto her shoulder, and created a messy stain on her t-shirt. Oh, what am I doing? Jean suddenly exclaimed and leaped to her feet. What have you drugged him with? She stared at Nastya with immense eyes of horror. From the vial, just like you said. Nastya, 
not comprehending anything, went to the kitchen, fetched and presented Jana with a vial carrying an apothecary's label from this, right? Then why isn't he standing up? Jana settled down once more, massaging Victor, attempting to bring him to his senses. We need to summon an ambulance. Where's the phone? Jana leaped up and rushed to the kitchen, opened the cabinet, threw everything on the floor, seized the vial without any labels, and stared at it. The cap was tightly sealed, the vial had never been opened. Jean opened the door under the sink and tossed it in the trash. When the ambulance arrived, Jean nervously rubbed her fingers and kept repeating that she had poisoned her husband. With what? Show me, the doctor asked wearily. Zana handed a vial of medicine. Don't be silly. You can't poison or assist him with this. He's having a heart attack. We're taking him to the hospital. Fidia, get the stretcher. Did you quarrel? The doctor asked sympathetically. Zana was pacing around the hospital corridor while the doctors were saving her husband's life. Eventually, the physician emerged to her and informed her to return home. She wouldn't be permitted in the critical care unit. Nevertheless, Jean erupted into tears, seized the doctor's hands, and implored him to allow her to glimpse Victor for a minute. They administered an injection to her, placed her in a taxi, and dispatched her home so she wouldn't obstruct. All due to a sedentary lifestyle, Beer, cigarettes, contemplated the taxi driver. Here the heart gave out. He lectured and authoritatively explained to Jana, half asleep and lethargic from the medicine. Each day she arrived to visit her spouse. Her heart was prepared to shatter into fragments from compassion for him. Dmitry Maximovich, with his radiant smile, was a thing of the past. Pardon me, it's all my mistake. I was so frightened for you she expressed to Victor when he had already commenced getting up, and they were strolling down the hospital corridor. I apologize. I genuinely thought you were about to depart. I was so frightened, I couldn't even breathe. I didn't notice you, and you're so attractive. Things will be different now. Grant me one more opportunity. After three weeks, Victor was released to his residence. He was lying on the couch in front of the television, but now there was no beer bottle on the floor. And the view of her spouse losing weight did not annoy Jean at all, even quite the opposite. And in May, he was already doing pull-ups on the bar in the yard. By summer, he was quite lean and fit. Dmitry Maximovich still paid attention to Vera and now went to lunch at the bistro with her. But Jean didn't care at all. In relations with her spouse, they had discovered a second wind. She only regretted that she had wasted so much time. She should have aroused her husband, shaken him up, without deceiving and poisoning him, instead of letting him lie on the couch. It's never too late to give affection a second chance.